been afraid of your partnership with it the word of God outside of your partnership is as barren as anything the Bible says the word of God can be made unfruitful is that true I want to teach this morning very briefly on what I captioned four levels of encounters four levels of encounters there are four dimensions you can call them four dimensions really I think dimension is, uh, is a better word there are four dimensions of encounters pastor that any man who wants to do business with God in this season in the midst of this evil and perverse generation there are four dimensions of encounters that every single one of us seated in this auditorium and those who would be listening must pass through to prepare and equip them to manifest the reality of the kingdom the reality of the spirit life the life of dominion the life that represents possibilities that are only contained in the christ and i want to introduce us i don't know how far we would stop but um wherever we reach that will be sufficient for this morning we we'll walk with time are we together the first encounter is the encounter with jesus the son of god write it down don't be familiar with what i'm saying at all the first dimension of encounter that anyone at all walking upon the face of the earth must have to introduce you to a life of victory and beauty and glory is an encounter with jesus the son of god jesus was speaking to nicodemus nicodemus came to him by night john chapter 3 and he asked him a question he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said for no man can do these things except god be with him are we together now and jesus replies nicodemus and says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom then nicodemus responds and says can a man be born the second time can he enter into his mother's womb and so on and so forth verse 5 says nicodemus now said Ex jesus speaking he said except a man be born listen of water and of the spirit then he says he shall not enter the kingdom of god down to verse 8 he began to speak he says the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it's coming or where it's going such is the character of one led by the spirit then he went to verse 16 popular scripture that has not been understood for a very long time he says for god loved the world so love the world as a matter of fact then he says he proved that love by giving his only of course we know now that is jesus is not his only begotten he's the first begotten but then he was the only begotten son now listen he gave jesus and then he said whosoever believes in him there is a reward for taking the risk to believe in the person and the message and that reward is this the bible calls it everlasting life other versions call it eternal life we began to make that correction yesterday in abel kuta and i said none of those definitions actually fit that description now when you study greek and hebrew you will realize that the words those languages are somewhat like yoruba where you can have one word with extended meanings and when you want to communicate it you will find the best description that suits that context if it has a number of synonyms you find the best one that communicates the thought to the listener are we together now so this life has many characteristics and the translators looked for the best quality to describe it and they felt a life without end would be the best description so they call it eternal life but it is not eternal life everybody has eternal life are we together mm, yes the condition for eternal life is not receiving jesus the condition for eternal life is passing through the womb of a woman mm. <laughs> the moment you pass through the womb of a woman as a gate 
interfacing the realm of the spirit to the physical realm you qualify for eternal life sinners have eternal life eternal life just means life without end nobody's life ends there is only a change of dimension are we together now jesus himself taught us in the parable about a rich man and a poor person called lazarus they live their lives on earth and then sin one passed then the bible reveals two of them again alive in another dimension of living so the concept of death is simply a translation from this realm where you have to share this authorization called your body the body is simply a system of authorization that allows your spirit to function on earth within a time limit are we together now yes so that you have separated from that body does not mean you have stopped living the rich man was still living when you preach to people you don't ask them will you spend eternity the question is location not possibility so what then is everlasting life john himself in his epistle john first john chapter 5 11 and 12 first john chapter 5 11 and 12 this is what he said um when you read especially verse 12 okay it says and this is the record that god hath what help me please this is the testament it is a testimony it's a record that's a legal terminology it says that god hath given us now he uses that word again you see translated eternal life it says and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son of god hath not life are we together now listen very carefully he was talking and teaching in a culture where people practice occultism the greeks when you study classical greek mythology you will understand that they had all kinds of gods hermes zeus these were gods that were purported to be a product of angels just like the nephilims are we together now there was an interaction between spirits and the daughters of men to produce this species of beings so they had superhuman qualities qualities that were half of human beings they had unusual intelligence unusual body constructions etc they had unusual physical longevities and all of that so he was trying to introduce a life in contrast to other kinds of lives and living the natural human life that we know was not the only kind of life and living that was existent at that time people at those times could fraternize with gods of their various localities and they could extend and improve the quality of their lives higher than the human life but not god's life are we together now through divination people could exchange their children to prolong their own lives and improve the quality of their lives and like i said yesterday just prosperity wealth and abundance alone can improve your life to be higher than that which is affordable to the human the natural human being is that true but that is not eternal life the word there is a popular word that we know is called zoe zoe many people got that definition from kenneth e hagin and like i shared yesterday in abel kuta that kenneth hagin had blessed the church blessed me blessed everyone that we know but revelation is progressive if kenneth e hagin were alive i'm sure he would have written many other books as an improvement to his revelation end of it your phone rings with a christian song you off it quickly because you are you are not sure the embarrassment it may cost you we have allowed society to introtrinate us and make us believe that jesus is a disadvantage an encounter with the son of god there are many business people who don't know him they want to use him if you talk to them if you tell him let me give you a business idea they say wow please i've been waiting for it at this point of recession and he said look my idea first and foremost is jesus he said, are, you, are you stupid you think i i mean i think i didn't go to school you see how they make it look pastor the reason why we do not seek him is because we do not believe he's an advantage we were designed not to waste our time 
so we commit our times to the things that we consider to represent value to us Saul of Tarsus met him once and his ministry and life changed the woman with the issue of blood met him once and her situation changed blind Bartimaeus met him on the road to Jericho once and their lives changed have you not seen that Jesus changes people Jesus lifts people an encounter with him introduces the supernatural to your life there are many more encounters but this Jesus said sir I am the door any other way you want to route it you are a thief I am if I enter your house praying in tongues through the window am I your friend please answer me if I enter with hamper for you and I use the window am I still your friend the door there are many riches in that house there are many dimensions that like you enter a house and there are many rooms which other encounters will open us but the master door like you have the main door the main door listen is not principles the main door is not impartation the main door is the son of the living god jesus said i am the way i lead you to the truth you have to follow the way first forget truth until you find the way when you find that truth then you will walk in the experience of life they understood what he was saying no matter what food you have in your kitchen for me if i cannot come through the door i will miss out on that brothers and sisters this is a challenge for us this morning here at house of david it is important that for ourselves and for those around us we must stimulate encounters in them with the son of god unfortunately most of what we call evangelism does not achieve this so much it's just a, a religious system of trying to convince ourselves that we are contributing and doing the great commission we must allow our lives to be instruments of encounters with the son of god say amen the second encounter very quickly the second dimension of encounter that we must have is the encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit you ever are interested in living a victorious life please listen carefully encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit in john chapter 14 16 to 18 john chapter 14 16 to 18 jesus himself began to introduce us to the holy spirit john 14 16 to 18 um let's just take it one by one will that be fine so that we can see it john 14 and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter and he says that he may abide with you forever next verse he says even what the spirit of truth and the bible tells us two reasons why the world cannot receive him help me please reason number one what's the first reason because they see at him not the carnal nature of men is such that until we see things with our optical eyes we cannot relate to them it is facebook and the internet that has helped us to know that it is possible to relate with people without direct contact with them so you can have a friend you have never seen and you can even feel the impulses and the emotions of that person and say why are you sad yet you have never seen the person who taught us that it is possible it is impossible to relate with a being or a personality that is not human like us it's an indoctrination that came as a result of the carnal nature of men the bible says the first reason the world will not receive him is that they do not see him then neither do they know him you see that the bible says but ye know him now this is a mystery 
why he says for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you now the holy spirit is many things to the believer the holy spirit represents the continuity of the ministry of jesus to the believer the holy spirit is the manifestation of the presence of the father the presence of the son the only way jesus can be revealed to a man is through the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon a choice for pastors you see that so when you want to be a pastor they say there's a book i want to give you holy spirit read it and i think it will help you in ministry there are so many people who just acknowledge that there is such a being somewhere that they say help people call the holy spirit the holy spirit has changed my life the bible says in zechariah 4 and verse 6 it says the word of the lord to zechariah it says not by might listen carefully anything at all not by might not by power but by my spirit not say it the prophet say it the Lord God is giving you the prescription to a great life in other words ignore the Holy Spirit and is the same thing as signing up with a life of failure and defeat how many people ignore him I wish I had time this morning I would have given you an analogy that I gave yesterday because the only way I have found to teach people on the Holy Spirit is marriage are we together the person of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit working with you the invisible dimension of that fraternity producing extraordinary results through your life wisdom grace the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing many people want the anointing pastor and they ignore him no the holy spirit the ultimate custodian the distributor of the anointing we need an encounter with him in revelation chapter 22 and verse 16 to 17 hear what the bible says it says the spirit and the bride say come it takes you and the holy spirit to make the word manifest the spirit not the spirit alone not the bride alone it says the spirit and the bride say breakthrough come the spirit and the bride say healing come the spirit and the bride say miracles come the spirit and the bride say new levels come you've been saying it alone but the formula is the spirit and the bride because the spirit can search the mind of the father and tell you what is his desire for you the spirit and the bride many people claim to study the bible without him i call it hypocrisy he's the author of scripture the holy spirit is the author of this thing you hold around and so it does not make sense the bible is too complicated to understand without him there is a mix of culture attitudes error in translations you will not be able to truly understand except he brings the light holy spirit that's why many people read and all they find is things that are wrong and they get up and say no 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 no." you see the bible is a prophetic book even without the holy spirit you can study it and another spirit can give you interpretations the bible is just most commonly used by christians but it's not a book for christians people use it they use it in shrines they use it everywhere it's a book they add it to all the formulas people you can use the bible to do magic many things happen in the bible demons spoke correct some of you are surprised at what i'm saying donkey spoke animal spoke jesus spoke not every part of the bible is profiting for you it is the part that contains the spirit and the life of god and only the holy spirit can search that out so it's not the issue if, if i see it in the bible i'll do it what happened there men spoke in their depravity without the holy spirit our study of scripture is hypocrisy we are going to come up with disjointed revelations that are not consistent with the character of the christ it is the holy spirit that gives balance to your study and introduces to you truths that are only needed there is what we call forbidden knowledge forbidden knowledge is 
trying to access revelations and dimensions that are not in the scope of your spiritual growth process as far as this dispensation of work with God is concerned that was the mystery that was hidden in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you see that there is a curriculum of God for every dispensation for men to know him and it is yieldedness to walk within the jurisdiction of that curriculum apportioned. Many people erroneously have entered into all kinds of divinations because of their quest for Rema. They've gone online to browse every kind of thing. And you will see scriptural references. And in a bid to do those things, have exposed them themselves to activities of demons sincerely. There is a jurisdiction and it is only the Holy Spirit. No man of God by himself can define the boundaries boundaries of knowing God the Spirit of God there were certain things John saw he said seal it it is not for now close it leave it correct the ministry of the Holy Spirit if there is anything in my life today that is worthy of commendation brothers and sisters I submit to you before God it is a product of the Holy Spirit what you enjoy in this church under the leadership of God's servant is a product of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The man of God and his dear wife have yielded to the Holy Spirit to have birthed this. The Holy Spirit is a creator. The first manifestation of him was as a creator. Are we together? Number three. I'll take the fourth one in the evening service. The third encounter that we need is an encounter with the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. Please write it down. The third encounter you must have, non-negotiable encounter, is an encounter with the mysteries. Notice I didn't just say encounter with the word of God. I would have said that, but for the purpose of my explanation, the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom Matthew 13 verse 11 please Matthew 13 verse 11 it says he answered and said unto them because it is given to you to know what help me please the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom he says but unto them it is not given pastor hear what the bible says he said the secret things belong to the lord right the secret things belong to them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenant the secret things not the public things there are the, the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him there are secrets so let me tell you nothing of value is left just with, within plain sight is that true you don't fetch gold on the ground like that no everything that is of value is enshrined in mysteries that's why the bank is heavily protected with all kinds of codes because of what is there that's why where you keep your money is only you and your wife that knows nobody's in confusion as to where to carry umbrella for rain you hang it there and everybody sees it but anything that represents value you create a system around it to make sure that those who access it have complied with certain principles brothers and sisters this is the difference between any two believers their access to the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom it is not favoritism it is simply that every man is defined by the limit of his understanding our possibilities are created they are a summation of our the spiritual construction the things we know about God the things we know about his system this is what is called the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven the Bible talks about the kingdom of God the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven interchangeably they are used but theologically the kingdom of God simply represents everywhere everywhere is his kingdom the kingdom of God represents everywhere the sphere of his influence can reach 
whether it is there or not and that includes everywhere created by him heaven under the earth the earth are all jurisdictions of his dominion but the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of god where his value systems have been permitted to find expression and the experience of his life is finding expression within that territory that's what is called the kingdom of heaven and the way that is reproduced is by the manifestation of the principles the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom like you see someone sick you see that now that person is a child of god the bible says he should not be sick but that person is sick but something by accessing a mystery he can introduce something and lift that person that's the experience of the kingdom the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 very interesting scripture that although we are possessors of the life of God, it does not automatically mean that we begin to manifest it. Please read it if you are a child of God. It's projected one to read. Uh huh. Stop. Being what? Alienated. Although potentially speaking, custodians of that life alongside all the possibilities contained in it but the bible says we can be alienated when our understanding is darkened you can live as though these things are not true that ignorance can alienate a man are we together now psalms 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand knowledge is not enough understanding it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said regardless of your experience have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high then the next verse says but 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 because of verse 5 you shall die like mere men meaning you were not designed to be a mere man and fall like one of these princes galatians 4 says an heir as long as he is a child he said he differeth not that means there is no difference in his experience an heir as long as he's a child devoid of understanding differeth not from a slave although he be lord of all do you know brothers and sisters that our limitations today are a product of incorrect or no understanding of the systems of the kingdom someone can understand the way it works if i know for instance that on this stage there is i'm not supposed to match this place because of that understanding i can even come running and just navigate now you may not know and you can walk on and run into all kinds of things what do you understand about kingdom wealth and finances who taught you what was the reference for the teaching Who taught you about divine health you see that because pastor when people come to church and they hear a man of God teaching most times members don't listen they want to but they don't they just hope to see whether you can add one or two things to their understanding it's not a good attitude when you come to church listening to your pastor you must trust his leadership and you must trust the results in his life and listen to the formula he gives you and don't invent another one it must be executed as prescribed if the doctor says one in the morning one in the evening one in in, in the night if you take five like a man of god was sharing while we we're in in abelkuta you are going to alter the entire pharmacology of that drug are we together now it must be as prescribed so there are many people who miss out on the will of god please listen to me there are many cheap battles cheap battles that people should there are many retrogressions that are unnecessary especially under certain atmospheres but they know not neither will they understand 
there are many Christians today languishing in failure languishing in poverty finding different theological excuses to justify the way their lives are and thinking that everything will come just because life is not fair it has never been fair to anyone you make it fair by manifesting the principles of the kingdom nothing happening to anyone is new under the sun do you know that when men lose things there is a provision in the kingdom to have it back now if you don't know and you do not know how to make it back you will be in trouble brothers and sisters do you know that when you get into trouble that you know is your fault you are at the point of death there is something that can be introduced into the equation that will turn everything aside it's called the mercy of god are you aware of it you see people walk on and when they get into trouble when there's wrongdoing in their lives they are whipped of the consequences where did you keep the mercy it's not there by default it is invoked this is what makes the believer invincible it is not perfection it is that the system is so fortified that regardless of what dimension there is a bailout Aye. so i've not been a faithful tither and truly i hear a message by pastor and then i'm convicted but meanwhile the devourer has been getting to me i don't just sit i say oh okay i see lord i'm sorry i come to you with genuine repentance and i'm ready to begin to type however devourer there is an equation i know that i i am a violator but i introduce the mercy of god mercy is not for sinners it's a bailout system in the kingdom you need the mercy of god if you must survive they're about to sack everybody because something happened and you just gave room to the flesh and you were part of it you need mercy you can invoke it and i tell you you'll be cleaned out of that thing as if the devil does not exist this is the thing about the faith life that makes it so scary do you know speed 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 and ease of accomplishment is a provision that is within the jurisdiction of the believer if you know how to activate it there are many people it's not like you are not moving forward but it's too slow for your lifetime it's too slow it's too slow and god wants to move you god wants to move you elijah the hand of god came upon him he ran overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel when i look at your life it is a summation of all the mysteries you have understood and are activating you see that so two people please come sir i can stand with this gentleman two of us are believers we love god with all our hearts but our possibilities are so far apart in the same earth are we together now in the same earth his neighbor leaves him and comes to bless me as if he doesn't know how can his neighbor leave him and the neighbor is aware of his predicament but he did not know what to activate to create the effect he desired and he will leave him and come to me can you pray in tongues just for one minute this this thing is really boiling in my heart Pray in the spirit there is something i do not know and i admit it it's not this hard there is something i have not seen for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you there is something he has to grant unto you understanding understanding illumination by the spirit You don't have to remain in that situation. Oh. 
Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. The author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is Listen to me. 